Hello dear students, welcome to Exeometricos. This video is the part of the solution series for CSIR net December 2019. We are doing this problem 35 of your paper. It's a problem from complex analysis. All right. Although we are not using many concept from complex analysis, it's a basic, uh, basic algebra problem. So let us have a look. Consider the polynomial. So we have a two degree polynomial. In this degree two degree polynomial, this a is given as integer, non-zero integer, and p is a prime number which is greater than 13. All right. Suppose that a square is less than or equal to 4p to the power 11. Which of the following statements is true? All right. So this is what is given to you. Now let us proceed. What your options are saying is this that f has zero as ima imaginary axis f has zero for which this this and this so what is happening is you have to find out zeros for this polynomial so we have fz given like this z square plus az plus p to the power 11 where p is a prime number greater than 13 and a is an integer non-zero integer now let us try to find out its root so if this thing is equal to zero your z will be minus a plus minus under root uh, a square minus 4 p to the power 11 all right uh, over 2 now it was given to you that a square is less than or equal to 4 p to the power 11 now from here two cases arises case one is this that if it happens that a is a number such that a square is 4 times of p to the power 11 then what will happen all right so see if a square is 4 4 uh, 4 p to the power 11 then you will get from here that a will be twice all right so twice of p to the power 11 by 2 uh, sorry 11 by 2 now see this p to the power 11 by 2 will not end up with an integer answer it's not integer all right so because p to the power 11 by 2 is not an integer answer that means a square cannot be this all right so a is equal to this is not possible so this case is not valid for your problem Case 2 suggests us that a square should be strictly less than 4p to the power 11. This will imply a square minus 4p to the power 11 is less than 0. So you have negative in this square root. So because it is negative, so you can write your problem like this. Under root of 4p to the power 11 minus a square iota over 2 this is what we will get from here now see we have already proved that this number is a non-zero number therefore roots will be what roots will be complex and also they will be distinct so roots are complex we have to now check why they are distinct why they are distinct all right now see your first root is this minus a plus under root 4 p to the power 11 minus a square by 2 and the second one is this minus a by 4 p to the power 11 minus a square by 2 all right iota is also there these are your uh, not cap actually these are your two roots all right so you see this is minus this is plus so both the roots are distinct all right now the problem lies with the options option one says f has a zero on the imaginary axis now this root will lie on imaginary axis when the real all right real part of this complex number is zero now because real part is it is given to us that it's non-zero that is why it's it cannot lie on imaginary axis so it means that it means that first option is incorrect 
Second one says f has a zero for which the real and imaginary parts are equal. So see if you want real and imaginary part to be equal it means you want a is equal to under root of 4 p to the power 11 minus a square all right so 2 2 over 2 2 over 2 will be cancelled so you want this that means what you want you want a square is equal to 4 p to the power 11 minus a square so from here what we will get 2 a square is equal to 4 p to the power 11 so the same problem that we are facing over here in in the in this case one we will face here also so that means for this root <coughs> for this root what will happen real and imaginary part cannot be equal the same thing happens for this one also all right the similar way you can prove that a cannot be equal to the imaginary part so second one is incorrect third one says f has distinct root it is correct fourth one says f has exactly one real root so it is not correct because we are not getting any real root over here so fourth one is incorrect so this is how you can solve this problem it's a very easy problem nothing to do with the complex analysis uh, this is what i was saying earlier in the video so if you have any doubt regarding this problem you can ask in comment section if you have any other doubt different from this one you can join our whatsapp and telegram groups links are given in the description part of the video so thank you